Hello, Thought Bubble Digital Comic Con 2020. My name is Brian Keene. I'm a best-selling novelist and comic book writer here in America in the year of the apocalypse 2020. Uh, today, I am going to be reading a horror short story called Not Alone. Uh, it's a very short tale. should take us no more than 10 or 15 minutes. Um, it appears in How We Live Now, which is a digital prose anthology series from our good friends at Serial Box. Uh, I'm very lucky to have done quite a few things with Serial Box. Uh, Thor Metal Gods, Silverwood the Door, Exquisite Corpse, many others. Uh, this project was one of my favorites for them. I hope you enjoy it too. Again, this is called Not Alone. I've got to tell you, Bert, after the virus, I figured it would be the loneliness that killed me. Instead, I reckon it's going to be this goddamn tooth. Now, see, you just moaned in response. Is that you agreeing with me, or are you just making fun of how I'm talking right now? I can't help it, Bert. I apologize if I'm mumbling, but it hurts to talk. The right side of my jaw is swollen and hot. There's little tendrils of pain running down my throat and up into my ear. It feels like tiny spider webs. I tried telling myself that maybe it wasn't the tooth. Maybe it was just an ear infection or a sore throat. Maybe strep. But I know that ain't it. It's infection, Bert, plain and simple. And it's spreading. If I open my mouth the whole way, it hurts. But if I mumble, like I'm doing now, I can manage. So you go on and moan, and I'll go on and slur, and together we can still have a conversation, just like we used to do before all this began. I still think Hamlin's Revenge is a stupid nickname for a virus. I mean, I get it. Sort of. I know that it has something to do with the Pied Piper from the children's stories and the fact that the virus started with rats, but still, it's a dumb name. Maybe if they'd called it something else, more people would have taken it seriously and things wouldn't be the way they are now. You remember when it first started, and you and me and Henry and Cecil were standing outside the convenience store having our coffee, just like we used to do every morning, talking about the news footage. Sure, the video of those rats swarming out of the subway system and biting folks during rush hour, it was disturbing, but that was happening in New York City, not here in West Virginia. And then when they told us the rats were dead and everybody started making zombie jokes... But that's what they were, as it turned out, right, Bert? Zombies, just like in the movies. Although I reckon the movies only got it half right. On television, it's just the people that come back as zombies. But in real life, the virus spread like wildfire, infecting animals and people alike. They told us to distance ourselves from each other, from people and animals, but that's hard to do when the infected don't follow that rule. It's hard to social distance from something that doesn't share your concerns in that regard. Remember how the talking heads on TV used to make fun of us, call us preppers, as if that were some sort of political thing? I guess the joke's on them, Bert. Prepping, they can call it that if they like. Rural folks like us just called it common sense. Snowstorms, floods, forest fires, these things happened on occasion. And when they did, you had to fend for yourself. I've still got enough food and supplies to last for another month. Still got enough antibiotics, too, except that they've stopped working. I'm glad Myrna isn't here to see all this. In hindsight, it's a blessing that the ovarian cancer took her three years ago. But I was so lonely, Bert. I mean, sure, I hung out with you and the other old-timers down at the store every day, but when I'd get home of an afternoon, the house just seemed so empty and quiet. I'd turn the television up loud just to fill the silence, but that only works for so long. And of course, now I can't play the television at all. Sure, we could still watch DVDs or listen to music. That generator outside still has plenty of fuel. But you and I both know that any noise we make is going to attract them. It's better to stay quiet. Better to have hushed talks like what we're doing now. I learned that early on into the pandemic when Sally Hanks's boy showed up. What was that kid's name? Do you remember, Bert? No? Well, I guess it don't matter none now. It took me four shots to put him down, Bert. 
That don't sit right with me. And you know what a good shot I am. Even in my 70s, I can still bring down a deer with one clean shot. But Sally's boy? Well, it's hard to aim when you're crying, I guess. Those zombie animals have been a more immediate threat. All those corpses laying out there in the yard now, all the deer and squirrels and such. I've never smelled anything so terrible in my life, Bert. Except for maybe you. I'll tell you, old friend, I was happy when you showed up here. I mean, it broke my heart that you were one of them now and that you were only here to eat me, but I was still glad to see you in some weird sort of way. And I'm sorry again about putting you in the dog cage. Trust me, Bert, that was as tough on me as it was on you. Even with that makeshift tool I rigged with the broom handle and the collar so I could keep my distance from you, wrangling you was like wrestling with a bull calf when you're about to turn it into a steer. Nearly thought you had me a couple of times. But it all worked out okay. You've got room in there to move around, even if you can't stand up. And I was able to drag the cage in here to the house, even though you gnawed at my leather work gloves through the mesh the whole time. Good thing you didn't have your dentures in when you died, right, Bert? I threw the gloves out, of course. Can't take any chances about infection. Instead, I've just got the old run-of-the-mill kind of infection. It's been nice having you here, having someone to talk to. And I don't reckon I mind the smell so much anymore. I stink, too. Every time I open my mouth, I can smell it. I remember how my dentist used to make such a big deal about the fact that a person my age still had their wisdom teeth. I guess that's not very common. But boy, do I wish I didn't have them now. It started hurting me two days after the government ordered everyone to shelter in place. I kept the pain manageable by switching between Tylenol and Advil and with the bottle of bourbon atop the kitchen cupboard. But getting rid of the pain doesn't get rid of the problem, Bert. And that's where we are now. I had antibiotics. Like I told you, I have them still. I got them at the pet store. It's amoxicillin for fish tanks, but it's the exact same kind they give human beings. I took a 10-day dose of those, and they worked pretty well. I thought it was all over with. But then the infection came back, and now the pills aren't working. I reckon the bacteria has built up an immunity to them. I remember when I was little, my grandmother used to make a tooth tonic out of lavender and skullcap, both of which grew wild in the hollow around her place. I thought about heading out into the woods and looking for some, but we both know I wouldn't get very far. If it was a regular tooth, I'd soak my needle nose pliers in rubbing alcohol and yank it out myself. But you can't do that with a wisdom tooth. For that, you need a surgeon. And I don't reckon there are any of those left alive. And even if there are, we have no way of getting to them. So, that's where I'm at. I'm glad you're here, Bert. I was so scared of dying alone. It's a comfort to know that that won't happen. But I don't want you to be alone either after I'm dead. I ain't been bit. So if the folks on the news were correct, I won't come back as a zombie. I'll just sit here in this chair rotting. And that's not fair to you because you'll still be stuck in that cage. So here's what I'm going to do, Bert. Listen up. I don't know if you can really understand me or not, although I reckon a part of you must still have some sort of memory. Why else would you have walked all the way here after you died? There's a part of you, deep inside that decomposing brain, that must remember we were friends. In a minute, I'm going to take that pocket knife there on the end table, and I'm going to cut my finger open. I'll make it wide and deep. Make it easy for you. Then I'm going to stick my finger into the cage. If you're still my friend, all I ask is that you make it quick. Like I said, you don't have your dentures, and I don't fancy getting my finger gummed by you for the rest of the day. So just be quick about it. Get your spit into the wound. Let's use the virus to combat the other infection. And when we're done, I'll unlock your cage. Then I'll go into the bathroom, and I'll wait to die. I hope you're still here when I come out again. I hope that we remember each other. And I hope this works and that the pain goes away. I hope after death that I'm not alone. 
So there you have it again. Title of the story is Not Alone. Uh, you can find that at SerialBox.com. That's S-E-R-I-A-L Box.com. That is part of their How We Live Now anthology. Uh, Thought Bubble UK, thank you again. I've been Brian Keene, and I appreciate it. Enjoy your day.